We interrupt your regularly scheduled programming for a special episode of Ember's Reading Room. This line of episodes was specifically inspired by two children's books in my collection. One a while back we got to Whisper's Lonely Heart. Check the playlist if you haven't listened to that one yet or if you'd like a refresher. But you see, Lux was kind of tallying up the number of episodes and get this. This episode is number 50. We've done a lot. We've gone through a lot of books. We've had a lot of conversations. We've gotten yelled at by a co-author of one of the books. Well, it's been a long journey. Not as long as Lux Analysis as a whole, but it's been rather consistent and it's been very interesting. And it's been a lot of editing. <laughs> Mostly editing and retouching the covers of the books and trying to find them on Amazon and Lux not having to draw. <laughs> yeah, and me finally learning that I can just scan in the covers of her books instead of trying to find a higher resolution version of it online. Considering I have a physical book here in my hands for everything except for Cowpoke Clyde Rides the Range, which we got through Google Play, so, for the 50th episode, we thought it'd be a good time to break out the other book that actually inspired this series. So today we are looking at Buttermilk Bear, written by Stephen Cosgrove, illustrated by Robin James. Yeah, you haven't heard those names in a while. We're back to serendipity. Yes, moralistic, beautifully illustrated serendipity book was one of the inspirations for Ember's Reading Room. Yes, it's going to get a little saucy. No, it's not going to get explicit. Also, let's start with the cover. It's very nicely illustrated, and the coloring is very nice. The texturing of the fur and everything is really nice, but if you were a furry, they look like they're more than just hugging as friends. Mm -hmm. Also, I didn't read the lower caption. An open mind is the key to conquering all kinds of prejudice. Hmm, good message. Mm-hmm. Dedicated to Luann and Stephen Silky. May they live forever with their daughter Stacia in a land called Autumn Fall. Stephen. In the early spring, right after the snow had melted, there were great changes in the land called Autumn Fall. Flowers of every color and description popped their heads into the world, decorating the land left bare by winter. Green, hardy shoots of grass and clover pushed aside the bits of snow of winter past eagerly seeking the summer to come. All the animals looked about in awe after a confining winter sleep. All was as it should be in the land of Autumn Fall. Wow, that is a very nice picture. Though, to me, it's kind of interesting. The tree feels separate from the grassland. The grassland feels separate from the forest in the background. And the animals feel separate from the background. It's kind of interesting. I can understand the tree and the forest feeling separate because of distance, but they're not really blurred out like through um, camera focus. They're just, they just feel separate to me from everything else, though they do still fit in the image and they all are very nicely rendered and colored. I mean, just the texture of the fur. I mean, look at those fluffy little tails. Uh, we have bunnies on the ground and I believe those are chipmunks in the trees. Chip and Dale. Ah, Chip and Dale rescue rangers. There was, at this time in this land, a bunny family hopping about, searching for a new springtime home. There was a mama bunny, a papa bunny, and a baby bunny named Buttermilk, who looked just like her name. They had been searching for days and were about to give up when they found a perfect inn to make their home. Together, the bunnies scooted down the twisted tunnel, avoiding a clump of dirt here and an old cobweb there as they explored their new home. Finally, Buttermilk's mom announced that the exploring was over and that it was time to get on to the task at hand. Come, come, family, she squeaked, as mothers do. We need sweet grasses for the mattresses and pollen for the pillows. Work, work, work. Buttermilk looked at her papa and her papa looked at her, then laughing and chanting, work, work, work. They marched off together to gather what was needed. They worked and labored far into the night, and when all was as neat as a pen, fell fast asleep. The illustrations are just so nice. I 
Ooh, really? The textures, the way the ground is rendered, the pebbles. I like the little touch of the roots coming in through the ceiling. I'm trying to figure out how an underground den has a window. Yes. I'm also trying to figure out how a wild bunny has a dress. And also why only the mama bunny has clothes. Well, this book so far is kind of anthropomorphic with the animals. So giving the mama a dress to help separate her from the papa. Uh, I think the eyelashes might just give it away. Eh, sometimes. Also, buttermilk looks just like her name. I've seen a carton of buttermilk. It doesn't look like that. It looks like a carton. Yes. And the buttermilk inside looks like liquid. Neither of which look like a bunny. I love how you're taking this literally. <laughs> I'm trying to have fun. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point. The next morning, as Buttermilk ate her breakfast of clover buds covered in sweet currant cream, she listened to her parents talk about all the new and exciting things to be found in Autumn Fall. Everything was perfect in Autumn Fall, except for the bears. Bears? said Mama Bunny. There are smelly old bears here in Autumn Fall. Yep. <sighs> Yeah, yep, said Papa Bunny. Big waddle tail bears are right here. Yeah, bears are the one thing that can ruin a neighborhood. Wow, getting right to the point. Buttermilk listened carefully, for she had never seen a waddle tail bear before. She decided her first order of business would be to search out some of these smelly old bears and see for herself how they could ruin a neighborhood. Smart kid. Keep things open, check things out. Also, the mom's not wearing an apron. I'm pretty sure that was an apron, not a dress, in the other shot. Could have been an apron rather than a dress. It's hard to tell because she was holding the pillows in front of her. And there are aprons that fit like that. But it looks like Buttermilk's wearing something, though. Yes, you can see a little bit of blue. Kind of a collar, really. Mm-hmm. That implies that she's wearing something. I like how they furnished up the place, a nice pink... I always said wallpaper, but I don't think it's wallpaper. Maybe a paint job. I know it's dirt walls, but it's rendered pink. Mm -hmm. And they got some nice drapes. And the table's cool. Nice floral pattern on the tablecloth. This artist really knows what they're doing. As we've said previously, <laughs> she does nice work. As soon as breakfast was done, Buttermilk hippity hoppity up the tunnel to the meadow above. She sat at the entrance to her home and looked this way and scrunched her nose that way, trying to decide the best place to search for waddle tail bears. She finally chose that way and hopped on. Buttermilk hurried along until she found a furry creature with a big flat tail. Are you an old smelly bear? She asked curiously. And if you are, why are you ruining the neighborhood? Straight to the point, kid. Very. Kids usually are. Mm -hmm. Why? No, I am not a bear. I am a beaver. I chew up trees and make sticks out of them. With that, the beaver waddled on his way, and Buttermilk hopped on hers. That's a nicely rendered beaver, all curled up with its tail in front of itself. And oh my gosh, that is cute. Buttermilk is cute. She is cute. Even though it's just the back of her, but the way the ears are rendered and the tail, oof. And those flowers are very well done, too. Mm -hmm. Man, just the way this person does art. It's lovely. I didn't realize I missed it. <laughs> well, it's been a while since we've done one of these. She hadn't gone far when her nose began to twitch in great irritation. Wafting on the air was a terrible smell. That must be the bears, she said gleefully. She hopped quickly along the path until she came face to face with a strange creature. The creature had slick black fur and a long white strip from the tip of his nose to his tail. If there was ever a smelly creature, this was it. Are you an old smelly bear? And if you are, why are you ruining the neighborhood? No, I am not a bear, said the creature indignantly. I'm a skunk. I spend all day smelling the flowers and eating the pink persimmon blossoms, and I never ruin neighborhoods. Then, with his tail held high, the skunk marched into the woods. So it went for the rest of the morning with Buttermilk asking each and every creature she met if it was a bear. That is actually a very lovely rendered skunk. Just the way the fur, it's... What's really interesting is it's like the artist does outlines, but only for certain 
parts of the features and sometimes you get more of an accent of what would be an outline. Like the fur of the skunk in the back half doesn't really have an outline. It's just the texturing giving it its shape. But if you look at the um, face and the edging of buttermilk and the skunk, you kind of see a darker line giving an outline. And those are some lovely grasses. Quite, and lovely flowers too. I it guess those are the persimmons. I don't think I've ever seen a persimmon blossom. I remember persimmon trees, but you know, trees do start out small. As the day wore on, Buttermilk hopped faster and faster. She scurried here, there, and everywhere, but she couldn't find a bear. Hmm, she thought as she raced down the path. Maybe there isn't any such thing as a waddle tail bear. It was at this precise moment that she ran pell-mell into another creature running in the opposite direction. They flipped and flopped, colliding in a puff of dust and tangled legs in the middle of the path. And here we are, the bear. Kind of cute, really. And the whole scene is kind of cute, too, because we have buttermilk kind of really on their back. It's kind of hard to tell if that's all just her back legs there or... I'm pretty sure one of it's the front paw, but is the other one a back paw? It's kind of hard to tell. That's definitely a front paw here at the edge of the page. But I think that the other two both look like back paws. The one that's over the bear's leg and the one that's up on his chest. It's just the way the angle here on this, the leftmost one, just feels kind of off for that. But otherwise, it's a very nicely rendered image. Though I think there's might be some misprinting going on near the top of the page it's almost out of focus and not in the way you would do for focus blur no it's more like a print copy error and you can see a little bit of that around buttermilk's ears as well it's only like the top quarter of the page otherwise very nicely rendered it's almost like it was put on a flatbed scanner but it was tilted up slightly so the top part of the page was further away from the scanner head It'd be interesting if we come across another physical copy to see if this page looks the same. Hmm. The two of them politely helped each other up and sat at the edge of the primrose path. I am so sorry, said Buttermilk as she examined her newfound friend. I was hopping so fast I didn't look where I was going. My name is Buttermilk. What's your name? So we aren't asking if he's a bear. <laughs> Probably because of the situation of how it happened. Quite likely. The other creature smiled a gentle smile and said, My name is Jingle, and I wasn't looking either, so please accept my apologies. For, you see, my parents were saying just this morning that some waggle-eared bunnies had moved into the area. Papa said, There goes the neighborhood. I have never seen a bunny before, and I wanted to find out what kind of an animal could carry off an entire neighborhood. <coughs> what kind of animal could carry off an entire neighborhood? A lion tortoise? Yes. <laughs> Buttermilk giggled. It couldn't be the bunnies, because I'm a bunny. My papa said it was the waddle-tailed bears who were ruining the neighborhood. The little bear laughed and laughed. It couldn't be the bears, because I'm a bear, and I have never ruined a neighborhood. And going over to the art, there's a little bit of that go that fuzziness, that off focus going on up here. It's not as bad as the previous page, but it's still slightly there. Interesting, because uh, Jingle and Buttermilk are both clearly in focus and very well rendered. Nice texturing on the fur once again, but there's less outlining this time. There's no real pen lines for the fur. Just a little bit of darkening around the ears and stuff like that. Just a little bit of extra shading of a darker brown. Buttermilk Bunny looked carefully at Jingle Bear and sniffed twice. You don't smell, and you aren't very old. Maybe my papa was wrong. Yeah, said Jingle, after sizing up Buttermilk. You don't look nearly big enough to carry off a neighborhood. Maybe my papa was wrong, too. Satisfied that their parents were mistaken, the bear and the bunny spent the rest of the day meandering about the meadows of Autumn Fall and quickly became fast friends. Later, as the sun was setting low, they hugged each other that special way friends do and promised to meet tomorrow at that very same spot on the Primrose Path. Then they hopped and waddled in opposite directions to tell their parents the good news. 
so I believe this was the line you brought up to me when you really started playing around with the idea of doing Ember's reading room. Yes, yes, that, that hug, that special way friends do. How is that different from an ordinary hug? Why did we have to say the special way that friends do? Isn't a hug normally just a hug, except when it's not? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Though it is a very cute image. They're hugging each other, and it's definitely a, a nice friendship hug. They're just holding each other. It's more of a side hug, because you can see most of Jingle's body, and he's the one facing toward us, and we're getting kind of a side view of Buttermilk because we can see her face, but we're also seeing her back because we can see her tail. And I like how they're nicely framed in the flowers, which are different than the other flowers they've been rendering. It's the same color, but they have more petals, and it's not like the other ones, the petals are um, different, except for just a page before, but I'm talking about couple of pages. Yeah, the earlier pages had different flowers, a similar color, but they didn't have as clearly delineated petals. But starting with the image where Buttermilk and Jingle bumped into each other, we've had these other ones that have clearly delineated petals, but a similar color scheme. And it's kind of a lavender purple, pink purple? Pink purple. It's more on the pinkish side of purple. Buttermilk skittered and scampered through the woods to the burrow that the bunnies called home. She zipped down the tunnel and ran right into her mother, who happened to be carrying the supper of fern leaf lettuce to the table. Buttermilk went flying, Mama went flying, and the lettuce landed on Papa's head. Oh, Mama, I'm sorry, but I was so excited, Buttermilk said as she cleaned up the mess. You were so wrong about the bears. I met the most wonderful little bear named Jingle, and he's my most favorite friend in the whole wide world. She bubbled on and on about the fun they had, when suddenly she realized that her parents weren't laughing. In fact, they appeared to be very upset indeed. Papa Bunny slowly stood and brushed the lettuce from his fur. With one large furry foot tapping on the floor, he said sternly, Baby bears grow up and become mean and vicious bears who eat little bunnies. That is the way it is and that is the way it will always be. You will never, never see this jingle bear again. We'll see. We'll see. Also, the father looks very stern in that shot. But it's kind of ruined by the lettuce leaf hanging off of his ear. It's, it's kind of like in My Little Pony. The wig just kills it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. Also, does this storyline sound familiar? Girl meets boy. Girl likes boy. Girl comes home and tells her parents. Parents say you will never see that boy again. Yeah, very common. Also, is very common in the specific of racial or differences. Yes, because you could go Romeo and Juliet with them being from warring families. Zombie human. Yeah. From warm bodies. An awesome movie if you haven't seen it. Yeah, and we can say that because we haven't read the book yet. Yeah, we need to read the book. Might hurt the movie, though. I mean, huh, look what happened to Never Ending Story. <laughs> the only difference I've heard is it's, the book's more in R's head. Hmm. Yeah, that would be kind of difficult to portray in a movie. But Papa, Buttermilk cried, maybe, just maybe, if Jingle and I became friends, bunnies and bears could live together in the forest and help one another. Whoa, that's classic right in the face. Not saying it's a bad thing, it's just like, wham! Oh, let's circle back a little bit and look at the published date. Hmm, third printing was in 1987. With tears pouring down her furry face, Buttermilk talked and talked. She talked about cooperation and understanding. She told her parents that the bears probably felt the same way about them, and if bunnies and bears would only try, they just might become friends. Come with me tomorrow and see what good friends Jingle and I have become. The two older bunnies listened reluctantly, but refused to change their minds. We'll come with you, but only to make sure that you say goodbye to this bear forever, said Papa firmly. Then, 
Because it was late, the three of them curled up beneath quilts of eiderdown and fell fast asleep. Quilts of eiderdown? What is eiderdown? I don't remember. Well, it looks more like, um, oh, let's give me a second to think of the word here. Uh, it's a silky material. It's not silk. It's kind of a fuzzy shirt material. Oh, velour or velvet? Velvet. It looks kind of like that. All of this art is just so nicely rendered, though I'm not quite sure if that's an error or something, because there's a small white smudge on a particular part of the page that you're like, that shouldn't be there. Yeah, the only part where it would make sense is if it was somehow the moonlight coming in through the window, which has no drapes. Also, another window? Because this isn't the kitchen. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out how this underground burrow has windows. Because they clearly went underground. Because they clearly state that it's a den. Bright and early the very next morning, Mama, Papa, and Buttermilk Bunny hopped off to the Primrose Path. There, at the edge of the forest... Hidden beneath clumps of clover drenched in morning dew, the older bunnies nervously watched as Buttermilk hopped to the middle of the meadow to meet her best friend, Jingle Bear. Now I wonder if the artist was clever enough to put a four-leaf clover in there somewhere. Those are, that's two clovers right there. I think the closest is actually that one right there. What about that one oh. and that one? Well, I pointed at the bottom one first, and there's one right above it. Yeah, there are some four-leaf clovers in this shot. But most of them are three, which mm -hmm. is standard. Also, yeah. it's white clover, in case anyone's wondering, because it does have some clover blossoms. Hmm. And it's a very nice rendering of the Papa and Mama Bunny hiding in the clover, and Buttermilk running off into the distance. Though the mother seems more darkly shaded here than in the earlier ones. Um, in the earlier picture, she didn't seem that close in color to the father, but now they look very nearly the same shade. Maybe they're going for shading because she's hidden in shadow? Could be. Buttermilk sat with a thump on an old wooden stump and waited. It wasn't long before the little bear cub came waddling along and sat beside her. You wouldn't believe, said Jingle. What my parents said when I told them I had met a real live bunny. They ranted and raved, and at first refused to let me see you ever again, but finally decided they would watch and make sure I said goodbye to you forever. Sure enough, at the other side of the meadow, Buttermilk could see two big bears peering anxiously over a patch of honeysuckle vine. Yep, you can see the two heads just peeking over the edge of the hill in the background in front of a forest with some bushes. And Buttermilk looking over her shoulder over at them. And Jingle just sitting on the stump. Very nicely rendered. Though the way Jingle's rendered, I realize, is like less classic kind of baby bear. And it's kind of a stylized version. It's quite nice. Buttermilk and Jingle sat and talked about the problem at hand. With all the bunnies on one side of the meadow and all the bears on the other. Finally... Buttermilk and Jingle realized that the way the bears felt about the bunnies was the same way the bunnies felt about the bears. And there was nothing the two of them could do to change their minds. Nothing would change. But maybe, just maybe, by staying the best of friends, Buttermilk and Jingle could teach the other bears and bunnies that prejudice was just plain wrong. After giving each other a special hug, they hopped and waddled back to their families, Resolved to the fact that barriers can be broken, but only in a matter of time. Getting right to the point there at the end. And look at the sad bunny and bear. Buttermilk is looking over her shoulder at her friend as he walks off to his parents. Who don't look like they've moved much from the last image. A little bit, because the hill is presented at a different angle because we're getting a slightly different perspective. Because mm -hmm. now, instead of the stump being very up close and more in the forefront, it's slightly off to the side as Jingle's walking back and Buttermilk is standing there watching. Mm. And it looks more like a round, as they call it in this shot, where it's just a chunk of the tree cut out and put on the ground. Because you don't really see any roots coming out from it, unlike the other shot. See how it's tapering off and you can see the roots coming out? Yeah, in this version, it does seem more round at the base. 
that, that may just be because we're not seeing the right side of it because that's actually off screen and the left side of it is mostly blocked by Buttermilk's body. As you walk through forests or the meadows of your mind, stop and talk to those you fear, good friendships you may find. Ah, a nice shot of them walking off into the forest with flowers behind them closer to the camera, nicely rendered grasses short and long, and there's a path of the short grasses where Buttermilk and Jingle are walking off. At least mm. I presume it's Buttermilk and Jingle. Would kind of have to be, because as of the end of this book, they are the only bunny and bear who speak to each other, let alone walk along holding hands. So, what did you think? <laughs> it's not entirely fair, because I reread this one before we ever started Ember's reading room, so I've had in my mind all this time <laughs> this slightly heavy-handed story that from an adult perspective has quite the set of overtones and undertones and kind of reads like a children's version of Romeo and Juliet. But it does have some good points about prejudice and stuff like that. And understanding and people choosing to accept a viewpoint about a person or group without allowing for any evidence that contradicts that to be considered, which is actually a human trait. We evaluate people based on first impressions, it has been scientifically studied, and first impressions are often wrong. And we will actually reject evidence that contradicts that first impression. If it comes up, we'll forget about it, we'll ignore it, we'll say it was a one-off, this isn't really how the person is. My first impression is how the person is. And that can be changed, but it usually takes a mallet of it happening over and over again and repeated exposure. And if that's a person or a group that you don't like, odds are that person or group isn't going to get that chance. Because changing prejudices of any type usually takes generations. Lots and lots of generations. Because there is always a trickle-down effect as values from a previous generation are taught to a new generation. And both good and, air quotes on both, good and bad, because values are subjective, because those who feel prejudiced feel justified in that their view is correct. So to them, that is a value. But a good work ethic is also a value, and that is something that also can be passed down. So both good and bad can be inherited and learned. So I think Buttermilk and Jingle both had their own separate books, neither of which are in my current collection because there is a book called Buttermilk and there is a book called Jingle Bear. So I think each of these characters got their own separate book, whether that occurred before or after Buttermilk Bear. I'd have to check the publication timeline, and even then that may not be accurate because you know how sometimes sequels are prequels and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And speaking of that, what did it say this was? The third reprinting? Yes. In uh, 1987, this was the third printing. Ah. And that might also explain the weird out-of-focus spots we noticed in those two pages, because they may have had to rescan the art. Entirely possible, or this just could have been a bad batch. Because we know in some of the modern versions of these books, the images are cropped. Yes, they crop the images, and they also saturate the hues more. If you compare an older version of the book with the newer one side by side, you can see that the edges are cropped out and that the colors are more heavily saturated. So yeah, 50. Who'd have thunk? Mm-hmm. Well, it's one of those things where, you know, nobody ever knows what's really going to catch on. The people who do figure out what everyone wants are people like MatPat, Markiplier, you know, in terms of YouTube stars and leaders in the fashion industry and in product production and technology. They figure out the things you didn't know you wanted and then they present them to you. Or they make you think you didn't know that you wanted it. Yeah, marketing. S Steve Jobs was an expert at that. 
Well, he got good values of that kind of salesmanship from his parents. I guess that's what I get from the biography that he officially released. So that would be an example of a value or skill being passed down between generations. Well, this has been Buttermilk Bear, written by Stephen Cosgrove, illustrated by Robin James. And wow, episode 50 of Ember's Reading Room. Thank you for listening. We've made it this far. I guess we'll keep going. I still have more books. We'll see how long it lasts. Uh, enjoyed Buttermilk Bear and want to track down a copy of your own? Check below for an Amazon link. Serendipity books tend to mostly be in print. Though, as we said, there are some differences between newer and older editions. Strictly the artwork. The text does not seem to be altered. Just feel like shopping? Amazon link, Ebates link. We're 50 episodes and you've heard the sales pitches before. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. Yes, 50 episodes in and no official sponsorship. Let's see if we can't make it through 50 more. <laughs> Thank you again for listening.